the, the big catastrophe has to happen before anything gets done. These are just all visions of the future. Yes, we are going to get there. We are going to achieve these things. But billions of people need to die. Period. Well, it's very dark, man. And that's, exactly that's the truth. The universe is, space is dark. And Technology often sees human labor as a flaw to be fixed and done away with and ironed out. So it's the people that are working on it who are closest to the scene who will say, look, guys, this is not going to be some gentle transition. Uh, and even if you look at the Industrial Revolution, it had mass riots and violence and uh, popular movements. Labor unions came into existence in 1886. Labor Day was inaugurated because of riots that killed dozens of people and caused billions of uh, dollars, of, billions dollars of damage. I mean, that's why they have like Labor Day. It's like, oh snap! Like you know, laborers are freaking revolting. Let's give them a holiday. Uh, and we instituted universal high school in 1911. So, and in large part because of a response to what was happening. So the Industrial Revolution was really, really rough, and this time is going to be much, much worse, according to Bain. It's going to require labor absorption at between three and four times the rate of the Industrial Revolution. What does labor absorption mean? Well, what that means is that you have workers who are losing their jobs who manage to find new jobs. Uh, and so the Industrial Revolution, again, massive conflicts and strife. And according to Bain, uh, this time you're going to need to somehow have uh, a reintegration of labor at a much, much higher pace. And if you look at the numbers right now, they're really discouraging because the efficacy rates of government-sponsored retraining are between zero and 37%, really bad. I mean, 37 is being very, very generous, honestly, because that's just one study said 37% of people trained in this industry um, went into that industry. And so some of that would have happened without <laughs> the, the, the retraining, presumably. Um, so we're t more and more American men are leaving the workforce, and men tend to deteriorate it, without work. Um, we, I'll include myself because you know, I'm a guy and I resemble this, um, the first thing we tend to do is play a lot of video games. It's like 75% of this now freed up time goes to video games. And this is like a lost meaning or purpose in life. So now what do we turn to? Yeah, if you're just an idle dude, like the, the progression seems to go by the numbers because I'm a very data-driven guy. It's a lot of video games, it works well in your 20s, but then you start getting sad in your 30s. And then when you start getting sad in your 30s, you go to drugs, alcohol, um, self-destructive behavior, occasional like violence and criminality, and uh, early death. That's like the, the general progression without work. That sounds fucking horrible. For me. Yeah. Oh, I mean, come on. <laughs> it's not that bad. Well, that, this is just data. There's too many people on the planet. Uh, well... You know, it, it's this disintegration that, that happens. I mean, it's unlikely that it's going to be, you know, just in the primes of people's homes eventually. I mean, but, um, so I just want to point out that this is like, by the numbers, this is a different situation for men and women. Idle women do not uh, disintegrate into antisocial behaviors in the same ways. So, yeah, so um, we, need to, we need people in the early states to get energized, but we need people around the country. Uh, we need people to um, spread the word to their friends and say, look, we need bigger solutions, we need the freedom dividend, we need to value humanity, we need to build a new economy that puts uh, human goals and values first, as opposed to treating us all like economic inputs and doing the machine. Yeah. Because over time, the economic inputs model is gonna break down. It's breaking down right now. It's breaking down right now, people aren't being valued. Um, well, th th I think that uh, that's the thing. You know, these are, these are fantastic ideas, but this whole system has to break down before we can implement them. No one's going to say, yeah, let's do it, until they're forced to do it. People hang on to what they have. They don't want anybody to take it away from them, and they don't want to share. They don't want to volunteer. You know, th this is... This is 
this is just what I see in my 51 years. Uh, well, you know, you talk about humanity, having value on humanity. People don't even respect themselves. You know, um, there's, there's a lot of uh, truth and substance to what you're saying, because America historically has needed the crisis to respond. Uh, and the, the thing that I, I would say that gives me optimism is that this is like the opposite of climate change in terms of what you ask of people. It's like when there's climate change, you're like, hey, this is going to be really bad, so like do all these things for me, and we're going to like have to regulate things and cause friction, and you know, that, that, that's life. And then people are like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. But on this one, it's like, look, existential level threat coming, AI, software, machines, robots, and so the solution is, I want to give you a thousand dollars. Like it's not, it's not like, and I'm gonna take something away from you. It's like, and I want to give you money. Yeah. Like big transitions coming, and let's, uh, you know, let's start treating people like humans. And this policy passed the House of Representatives in 1971 under Richard Nixon. This was interesting when you talked. Yeah, about Martin that. Luther King was for it. Milton Friedman was for it. Uh, it. It became this close to being law, and it, it stumbled in the Senate because the Democrats wanted a higher income threshold. It's been in effect in Alaska for 36 years under a Republican governor uh, and is wildly popular. It's improved children's nutrition. It's created thousands of jobs. It's made uh, income inequality go down. So, like, this is not out of the realm of possibility at all. It, it, like, a thousand economists signed a letter saying this would be great for the economy in 1970. Um, and it's been in, in effect in one state. It's just a state that none of us pays attention to because it's really cold and a little far away. But, but it's a Republican state, and they're, they're a massive uh, libertarian and conservative uh, support for this because there's something very, very deeply conservative about the freedom dividend. It's like, look, don't give the government the money so they can do whatever it's going to do. Give you the money, give you the money, give me the money, and then we will decide what to do because we are the owners and shareholders of this society. Mm -hmm. The same way a company declares a dividend, we're all like genius, like good yeah, management. Yeah, yeah. This, comp this country can declare a dividend for us and it can easily afford it. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? Did I, did I turn you around? There's a, no, because of one question, uh, one answer just raises another question. It's <laughs> tough. I just, don't feel that, I just don't feel that humans at this stage of the game are... It's the, the, the big catastrophe has to happen before anything gets done. These are just all visions of the future. Yes, we are going to get there. We are going to achieve these things. But billions of people need to die. Period. Well, it's very dark, man. And that's, exactly that's the truth. The universe is, space is dark. And that's exactly what we have to try and prevent and preempt. Because to me, this revolution happens either the good way or the bad way. And the bad way may be irreversible. Like, it's one of the things that frustrates me about some people in this conversation, where some people say universal basic income is inevitable, but we shouldn't be doing it right now because of whatever. And then I'm like, look, if it's inevitable, you can't time it perfectly by some like, you know, unknown standard. If you go too early, what is the downside? You get more time to adjust, you get to build new institutions, like people can adapt. If you go too late, it might be catastrophic. Like, it's not like after the great trucking riots of 2026, then you're like, oh, like, here's universal basic income and then all the truckers go home happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you have to try and make the big moves to ease the transition because it's not like uh, communities or individuals or families just magically reintegrate. Like right, right now there's a disintegration happening and it's very, very clear by the numbers. Again, surging suicides, seven Americans dying of opiates every hour, more Americans on disability than work in construction. Like you can like record low no numbers of businesses being started, people getting married, people moving, having children, pretty much any positive act of optimism is at a record or historic low. I mean, our shit is coming apart. And so the question is, like, whether we can come together and say, hey, let's, let's have, like, a meaningful response to this, or like you're saying, we get there the bad way. But if we get there the bad way, there's probably no coming back. Like, the institutions need to come together quickly. Uh, and on this one, too, it's like, like, I'm suggesting something that's just going to make most everyone's lives better. Like, people say, like, what's life going to be like after universal basic income? Like now, just less 
miserable. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, like we can't put that together. Uh, so so I, I'm very optimistic because um, it's going to help people. And, you know, you get enough people activate around that, you can win. Well, you almost can't be pessimistic because you wouldn't get the election. And, you know, that's, that's, that's a real thing today, in today's day and age. You can't be pessimistic. You won't win the election. This is you teaching about Venture for America at Obama in 2012. Um, stimulating entrepreneurship, explaining the importance of the we center studies. Jobs. But during, you know, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. No problem. Um, so, so I was talking sense. Brock was very, very interested. He was like, "Tell me more. Tell me more." Yeah. And I've, I've actually, more. I've actually um, spent a bit of time with him because I was uh, like uh, appointed to uh, a couple of different um, uh, like presidential engagements. It was, you know, it's a great. Good. It was great fun. I got to introduce my wife to him at the White House. Like my in-laws liked me more for about a month. For about a month. For about a month. Yeah. And then, you know, no, my, my in-laws are, yeah. you know, yeah. my in-laws are into it now. <laughs> well, what happens, we're like, aren't we fighting against evolution, the survival of the fittest right now? There are these groups of people on the planet that have accumulated so much wealth. They have, um, they have made so much uh, impact and um, the other ones might not have. And it's a roll of the dice for you to be born in a place that has a, that is just less socioeconomic status than another, and so is it. Then, <laughs> it is it's that, just, yeah, it's just a fucking roll of the dice. So, <laughs> so is it, it? Is it our responsibility? Um, is it the responsibility of high SES to figure out how to um, funnel money through things like this value added tax and universal basic income and figure that out, or should they just speciate and go like, I'll be in the poor class and I just won't be able to keep up, right? And just like go speciate, go colonize the cosmos, and maybe your kids and their kids and whatnot, maybe we'll like just like leave it behind. What well, I, you know, I mean, I know you know people that have that point of view, um, and and to me the the whole thing is just so dumb because like let's say I'm uh, you know a rich person in San Francisco um, do I really think that you know society can disintegrate and that like my life will be just as like easy and happy and frictionless as it is now like of course not like if I have to hire bodyguards and get a bulletproof car and like you know take my kids out of school and get like a bunker somewhere and like you know I have to redecorate the bunker. That sounds miserable. <laughs> that sounds miserable. I mean, you know, and, and like have to live with like constant anxiety and fear um, because studies have shown that people who are at the top of unequal societies are less happy than people who are at the top of more equal societies. So to me, it's just like enlightened self-interest to be like, look, let's try and keep society whole. And it's not like the, the, like the survival of the fittest thing. I mean, like, you know, it's like, it's not like people stop having kids by the numbers. I mean, right now as we're sitting here, 40% of American children are born to a single mo or an unmarried mother. Um, it's so bad. And to, it's, it's not good. <laughs> and, and so, so but it just time. goes to show that it's that's not bad. like, all of a sudden there's like a total curtailment of like reproduction. I mean, that's not the case. And as much as we can talk about the utopia and the dystopia, I think that many people would rather push towards, like you said, enlightened self-interest of, um, pushing towards more of a yeah. being at the top of a, of a higher baseline for everybody and just being at the top more inclusive. Yeah, there's like the humanist moralist thing. It's like the right thing to do. It's moral, like I'm still a human being and an American and a parent and like the rest of it. And then there's just the practical. It's like riots are bad. Yeah. Like, you know, like private security forces. Literally, there's one person. Riots are not bad. Um, they will do, they will do, they will try to get away with whatever they can as long as people are satisfied. But the fact of the matter is there's a lot of people that are waking up. You talked about people waking up. They know that the game is rigged. There's something behind this yeah. that's not going to change until people start dying, until people get bashed in their skulls with metal pipes. Yeah, so that's the thing to avoid, that vision. Not at all. Bring that shit on well, so, as soon as we can. Yeah, so anyone listening to this would be like, hey, exactly. It's like, oh, snap. Even the guy behind the camera wants to bash someone's skull. No, not me. Happening. Not at all. I'm so, not going to do that. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a pacifist. I, I love. Yeah, yeah. I'm a lover, but not you, a fighter. You know I mean? But or I'm well aware. Like that, that, like, rioting because they don't have access to food or water or work or anything that they need. And like you or said, they're getting it, lied to and they're getting cheated and they're, they're being deceived. It's, it's, uh, it's a terrible yeah. game. And, and yeah. that, that is the case where society is 
more fragile than many people would like to believe. And the people at the top, again, you can have the humanist, like benign motivation, which I'm glad to say there are people that really do have that in their hearts. But then there's even like just the enlightened self-interest being like, look, this is a much better way to, for me to go. There was actually a guy who was like trying to pay a consultant to be like, hey, if everything goes bad, how do I make sure my security forces don't turn on me in the bunker? Because at that point, like, you know, like, like how do I know? Like, yeah, what, what's you know, like, yeah. so, so that's the kind of eventuality that people are literally playing out. Uh, it's much, much better for us to come together. Yeah, than to go apart like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah than, to, than to wind up in the bunker being like, how do I know my security guy's not going to like shoot me in the head? So Yeah, <laughs> how do I know that the cyber attack that's happening on the robotic bodyguards is not from a different well, person that's trying to kill me either? There's, there's so much to, to unpack in the, in the utopia. Like the, you're right, the, it seems as though the right direction is this direction, but then the further is like, how do we get there? And you, know, you have laid out some plans for us to get there.